I ran into Teddy Klassen in a coffee shop one night as he wrote poetry on his computer. It was then I realized I had seen this man before. Teddy had recited a poem in front of 6,500 people in McHale Center during Lute Olson's retirement ceremony in August. As we spoke, he went on to tell me his life story as poetry and his desire to inspire the world carried him through the lowest times in his life, times that found him homeless on the streets of Tucson. I had no family here, so I literally lived in the streets of Tucson for eight years. You know, I lived all around the Fox Theater, and I'd live in the tunnels. You know, you go to a rest a restroom and kind of clean up a little bit because a lot of people that are homeless uh, are there because they choose to be there. And I really didn't want to be there. I really wanted to have a normal life. Uh, sometimes I'd flash back, you know, to what I once had, you know. And it's you just can't let it get you down. You just got to be strong and you got to focus. But uh, the Fox Theater was probably the best place I lived because there I had my own stage. I had my own campfire pit. I had my own little house I built on right on the stage, the very center stage. And later, I'll never forget this, the people from the Fox were asking around, like, you know, do you know anybody used to live in here? And I thought I was going to go to jail. And they said, are you Teddy? And I said, no. <laughs> and I lied, you know. And the guy says, well, he's not in trouble, you know. We just want to talk to him about, the, you know, his poetry maybe we found in the theater. And I'm like, really? Well, I'm him. I'm not in trouble. And he said, no. And there was a lady I knew, and she went to the U of A herself and told him, hey, there's this guy that has this really cool poem about loot. And I, I didn't know what she was doing, and all of a sudden I get a phone call. And, and they invited me to go to U of A and, and asked me if I would recite my poem, if I knew it by memory or if I had it written down. I said, well, it's all memorized. And they loved it, and they said, well, we want you at the, at the, uh, at the final tribute at the McHale Center. And I was honored. I was really nervous, though. I have to admit, I was really nervous. I felt kind of like on air, if you will. That was when they called my name up, and I, I, it just seemed a little surreal. And then I just kept looking at Loot, and I could see his eyes lighting up, and I just saw that. I mean, it reminded me of my own father when he had a stroke, you know, and, and I just felt honored that I could be standing there in the, in the middle of McHale Center floor, and it just it was a real honor. And then when he hugged me, it just it kind of capped it, you know, it made it feel like it was all worth it, you know. And I, I wanted to say so many things to him. I, I wish I would have said, hey, can we do lunch? I'd love to sit down and have a lunch with you, sir. But I never got to say that because I was just overwhelmed. And it's kind of neat that if we just had more people in this world like loot, this world would be a much better place. If people could just stop, smell the roses, and then maybe give a few roses out. Because uh, it's not what a man does is... And it's not what a man has, it's the direction he's going and where he's coming from, how he's getting there, and why he left where he came from to get where he's going. That's basically what life's all about. <laughs>